Remember the sampler people? They were, take a sample, take a sample. Do they still have the sampler people at sample? Okay. Well, I was in there one day and there was this celery stick lady. Celery sticks, mmm, with cream cheese on it. Oh, yummy. And then there were these, the, the sausage lady. Celery sticks and the sausage. And for the life of me, I was determined I was going to eat healthy. I wanted a celery stick. And so, man, I, I walked past this, past this lady. I looked at her in the eye. Man, I want a celery stick. She just ignored me. And she was so busy straightening her sticks. She was so busy straightening her sticks. Keeping her sticks straight. That's all she could think about. And meanwhile, the sausage lady was just van of wine. Hey, have a piece of sausage. And she was in my grill, right up in my nose. Have a piece of sausage. And I couldn't get the celery lady to give me the time of day. And so I went around the, I went around the aisle, and I walked through, and I came back again. And I made eye contact with the celery lady. Come on. All she could do was think about the cream cheese, and if it was on there right, and all they were the same length. And I danced, and I jiggled, and I sang. I wanted so much. And meanwhile, the, the sausage lady, man, she was up again. Woo! Take some of my sausage. Well, the third time I went around, came back, and I, I mean, I, I did everything but just, you know, just, again, no celery. You know, eventually there's only so many times a man can show um, self-discipline. And so I took a piece of sausage. I felt guilty for days, you know. I asked God to forgive me. But as I went home, I thought to myself, you know what, that, that, that celery lady was so distracted by keeping her celery sticks straight <coughs> that she didn't have time to take care of the real important thing, which was taking care of me, her prize <laughs> customer. But you know what, Sandy? We need to rebuke distractions. Express a, a hearty distaste and anger over anything that would distract <coughs> us from seeing to those who come behind us. Moms and dads of all ages, grandmas and grandpas, uncles and aunts, staying involved in the life of their loved ones and not being distracted over stuff that matters little in comparison to all of us making it if you're with me on this, say amen. amen. <laughs> and then I had another thought underneath this idea of showing our kids what it looks like to be a Christian. We here at Lufkin First Church of the Nazarene have some mighty fine ministries going on. Some mighty fine ministries. What kind of ministries? Some mighty fine ministries. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask all of us to do something really radical and to find a ministry and get involved and stay involved and grab the hand of our kid or our grandkid or our nephew or our niece and ask them to get involved with us, showing them this is what service looks like. This is what it looks like to be a God follower. This is what it looks like to be all in. You ask me why the state of our church is positioned for growth and greatness? It's because we have a church going full of people who I think are have some of the best servants' hearts in the Tri-County area. But I think it's time, Lord, to move away from us serving into individual service into us grabbing the hand of a kid or a grandkid or a niece or a nephew and saying, hey, this is what it looks like to serve. It might be inconvenient. I might not have time. It might not be glamorous. My name might not get the worship folder. But this is what it looks like to serve. I don't care about what it looks like to sin. This is what it looks like to serve. That's the life I want to live. If you do, say amen.
Man, nail the squirrel. Our NMI ministry team leader, there's none better. There are countless opportunities for moms and daughters to serve together in regard to missions. Dr. Spann gives leadership to Love Inc. here in Lufkin. Praise God for him and what Love Inc. does. Dads, drop the gun and the clubs and the pool and take your son and take on a Love Inc. project and do something for somebody else. Daryl Prophet brings Christ-like passion to our parish ministry. Grandparents grab a hand of a grandchild and set up tables together, mop the floor together, do the dishes together. John Rawls oversees, John Rawls oversees our tool time ministry. It's making a difference in our community. Young moms, young moms and dads, young moms and dads, find out when the next tool time event is and get your little ones there. I guarantee you, they'll never forget watching people in their church volunteer their time and freely do something for someone else, especially someone from another race. In my notes here, I said, there would be amens after that, period. <laughs> then say, saying amen might not be enough. Maybe it's time to roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty. Amen. <laughs> and last but not least, look at verses 33 and 35. We see Jacob's sorrow. Jacob recognized the coat of many colors and said, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then jo J Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. I wonder, I wonder if Jacob, the father, if he had believed more strongly in God's revelations that came via Joseph's dreams, <clears throat> Jacob might not have jumped to the conclusion that Joseph was dead. Follow me on this. In Genesis 37, God revealed Joseph's future twice to the entire family, including Jacob, the father. And as soon as the, the brothers stir up the scheme and put it all together and present it to Jacob, Jacob buys into it and swallows it, hook, line, and sinker. When in that same chapter, just probably days earlier, God reveals through these dreams, hey, Joseph is going to have a major role to play in the life of you and your family for a long, 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 long time. You know what's going on here? Jacob was living by sight and not by faith. Boy, we love it, Teresa. Ooh, I'm going to live by faith, not by sight. But when we twist it around, that's discouraging. Because as humans, some of us at times get caught up in the idea of just our sight and not our faith. I'm going to live by what it looks like and not what God's will get to. Living by faith and not by sight. If you believe God is still able this morning, say amen. amen. Now follow me here because this is the best part of the entire message. 
Faith goes a long way in 2016. That's why our future as a church is so bright. That's why we are positioned for growth. How in the world can you and I worship and praise in this sanctuary every Sunday and not have a faith that is able to move mountains in light of God showing up and reminding us how big He is and how small we are and how small our problems are and how big He is. Folks, if you're not worshiping and praising God here in light of His great presence, you're missing out. i got to tell you, I'm living by faith and not by sight because my God says nothing is too difficult for Him and He reminds me every Sunday when I sing, bless the Lord.
took responsibility for one new person in this sanctuary in the month of May. Uh-huh. What are we waiting for? Well, Pastor, all my friends know Jesus. Well, make some new friends. Or we can just sit around and sing kumbaya if we want, but that doesn't do us much good. <coughs> Amanda, let every single adult in this sanctuary be right with God. Uh huh? And every adult wanna be. Would you come pray with me today? Neil, would you and Virginia come pray with me today? Zeta, would you and your family come pray? with me today, when new, new people, old people, young people, tall people, short people, friends and family to be, would you guys come and pray with me around the altar about the position of our church, you know, and the great thing that God wants to do over the next three and a half years. Who would come and pray with me right now around the altar?